So I'm going to switch to the iPad to, to get started. So remember what we uh, want to do as a uh, side note. We want to think about how to evaluate an EPV of a life annuity that pays amply or of a term life annuity that pays amply. And the only thing we'll be able to use is using the annual counterparts. Okay, so that's the goal. So first of all, I want to remind you about a couple of relations that we derived in chapter four of this uh, course. So there we said that under certain assumptions, more specifically a constant interest assumption and UDD assumption, we have the following connection between the EPV of a continuous whole life insurance and its annual counterpart, right? And the I refers to the interest rate, the delta refers to the force of interest. And in a similar way, you've got the following relation for the product that we pay at the end of the empty period. So you've got the following connection, which is left as an exercise. So we didn't derive uh, this relation. So what we want to do is, uh, first of all, I want to think together with you, yeah, what was again this uh, nominal interest rate, this IM? How do we have to understand this? What, what do we know about that? Well, this IM, that is my nominal interest rate. So this IM is my nominal interest rate. So the way how I can picture that is like this. So I start at time zero, I'm gonna run until time one. So if I would invest one euro at time zero, then that would grow to one plus I euros at time one, if I use the annual interest rate I. But an alternative way to look at this uh, one euro growing over time could be that I'm going from zero to one over m, from one over m to two over m, etc., etc. Right? And then I can say, okay, if I start with one euro at time zero, then it grows to one plus i prime euro at time one over m. Then this will go uh, again, etc., etc., until we finally reach time one. So, uh, because both ways of, of investing uh, should lead me then to the same amount of one plus i euro at time one, I have the following connection that this one plus i prime to the power m should, equal, should be equal to this one plus i. In that case, the i prime is the corresponding interest rate that I realize over a period of uh, one over m if the annual interest rate is equal to i. Now, so from this connection, I know that the i prime is equal to one plus i to the power one over m minus one. And what is the connection with uh, the nominal interest rate? Well, the nominal interest rate i m, that is then equal to m times the i prime. Or uh, what I could say is that the one plus I, the annual interest rate is one plus I M divided by M to the power M. Now, so this is, a, this is a, a relation, this is a connection that we gave earlier on in, uh, in our book and which we have to keep in mind here when we're dealing with these nominal interest rates. In a similar way, you can say something about the, the D's. So similarly, in a similar way, we can say something about the effective uh, rate of discount, the D. Right? And for this D, we know that one minus D is equal to V or one minus V is equal to D. Right? If you now do the same kind of reasoning 
over a period of um, length one over m, then you get that the d prime, the rate of discount over a period of length one over m, should be equal to one minus v to the power one over m. Okay. Um, we're going to write this as the nominal rate of discount divided by m, or uh, so that in the end you get so that you get that one minus d prime, that is one minus one minus v to the power one over m. Yeah. Uh, and one minus d prime to the power n should then indeed be equal to v and v is one minus d, right? So this gives us the connection between our uh, rate of discount, our nominal rate of discount and our original effective rate of discount d. So that um, one minus dm divided by m to the power m is equal to one minus d. That's the connection over here. So that being said, what we now want to do is um, we want to look at the EPV. So putting things together, we now want to look at the EPV of a life annuity issued to an exit payable paying amply. And first of all, we're gonna we're gonna rely on the so-called uh, endowment identity that we studied earlier on under constant interest rates in chapter five, right? And now we're gonna make the connection with this um, expression that we derived under the UDD assumption for our whole life uh, insurance that would pay at the end of the empty period. Yeah? So if I plug in this, this uh, approximating expression, if I replace the AXM with this guy, I can manipulate my expression and I'll retrieve something like this, right? What I'm now going to do is I'm going to replace the AX with um, 1 minus D times the EPV of a whole life annuity issued to X. That's again my endowment identity. And I'll then retrieve IM minus I times 1 minus D AX. like this. So rewriting this whole thing, I'll get expression like this. So this is in the actuarial literature denoted with alpha m, this is denoted with beta m. So we retrieve a way to evaluate the life annuity that is payable amply using its annual counterpart. And what we need uh, to match these two EPVs are the alpha m and the beta m constants that we introduced at this point, right? And if you look at the expression for the alpha m, and the only ingredients that you need are the annual interest rate, the effective um, discount rate, the D, and then the nominal counterparts. And the same applies to this beta m. Yeah? So this is a quick way to calculate the EPV of the life annuity paying amply using its annual counterpart under the assumption of constant interest rate and the assumption of uh, UDD, yeah, because that's what we relied on using uh, or 
when we were deriving uh, this, this, this steps. Okay, so let's return to the, to the sheets. What we now want to do is, um, what do our uh, valuation formulas become if we let the m run to infinity? And if you let the m run to infinity, then that means that you're in fact um, splitting up this yearly period in a large number of very small intervals, yeah? or intervals of, of a very uh, small length. Okay. So the first thing we can observe then is what do we get in terms of the limit of the nominal interest rate, for example, the IM, and what do we get for the nominal discount rate, the DM, if we take the limit for M running to infinity. And it turns out that both will then be equal to the force of interest, the delta. So let's take a moment to understand where this is coming from. I'll give the proof for the nominal interest rate, the IM, which we, using the derivation on the iPad, have been rewriting or have been introducing hmm, as the following, uh, the following concept, right? Now, if you bring the M here to the bottom, then what you recognize here is in fact the derivative of a function and the derivative of a function i plus one plus i to the power t um, evaluated in t equal to zero. Okay, so you see that coming up here. What I, what I recognize here is the derivative of this function one plus i to the power t and I'll take the derivative in t equal to zero, right? You also see here, I taking, I'm taking the limit for m running to infinity, but that's the same as saying one over m is going to zero, right? So indeed, I recognize this derivative. This is one of these derivatives that we often forget. So I have a reminder here for you. And if we use this, um, if we express this derivative in the correct way and evaluate it in t equal to zero, then we're going to see that this term drops. So we're left with the logarithm of one plus i. 1 plus i, that's the exponential function evaluated in delta. So if we take the logarithm, we end indeed with the delta. Yeah? So this is a, a short proof for the limit rotation, for the limit relation that we, um, uh, that we mentioned here at the top of the sheet. Now, having this insight, what we're going to do is we're going to step from the EPV of a life annuity that pays amply to the EPV of a continuously paying life annuity. And for that, we're going to express the limit of the constants that we introduced and which were dependent on M, the constants alpha, M and beta, and we take the limit for M running to infinity. And using the limit of the nominal rates, I, M, D, M, the fact that they go to delta if M goes to infinity, we retrieve the following constants. Okay. So that means that if I take the EPV of my continuously paying life annuity, if I calculate it as the limit for M running to infinity of the monthly or the amply paying uh, 